Well, that just f happened. Son of a b Well, good thing my mom is close by and come can come get me. Son of a bitch. That looks expensive. Well guys, the airplane is broken down right there. Been here for a couple days now while I was waiting on parts to come in. This is the first day I've had a chance to get out here, but the weather's looking pretty good, so I'm gonna try to get a little bit of airtime on the paramotor and then get working on this airplane, so. hours in the past six months so <laughs> I'm kind of expecting not to enjoy this flight actually it's a little bit windy but we're gonna give it a try just got to avoid hitting my airplane see my wings getting blown away not a, a lot of wind but this airport's kind of not a great airport to fly at when it's windy so we'll give it a try bumpy up here. What I always ask myself as while well I'm flying is if something were to happen and I were to live through it, like an accident right now, and I was in the hospital laying there thinking, could I have avoided this? If something happened to me today, I'd probably be able to say, yeah, it was pretty bumpy. I didn't really enjoy the flight. I should have just landed and I pushed it too far. So with that in mind, I think I'm going to set it down and make sure that I get home to my wife and kids tonight because I'm getting knocked everywhere. Those clouds are getting knocked over at the top. So something happened between here and there also that I don't want to mess with, I don't think. So yeah, not worth it. I got work to do on the plane anyway. So that's what I'll do. I'll just stay right here for a second and tell you guys what happened. So I was flying with my mom the other day. We decided to go on a little mom son date and I was just supposed to be flying around and I picked her up from this airport and I said where do you want to go and she's like I don't care let's go somewhere let's go to wherever and I was like well you want to go to Myrtle Beach for dinner she's like Myrtle Beach it's far I was like no <laughs> this is a Mooney that's like a 30 minute flight she's like okay yeah so we fly to Myrtle Beach it's a great great night we go out to dinner and um, everything's going fine start the plane up in Myrtle Beach and fly all the way home. Well, I passed my home, Berkeley County, which is over there, which is where I keep the plane. And I um, came back here to St. George to drop her off because this is near her house, right? And yikes, it is, it is bumpy. Get through this story quick so I can land. <laughs> and uh, I drop her off and I watch her leave, make sure she gets out of the airport okay. And then I get in the plane to start it up and I try to start it, it's a hot start, doesn't doesn't fire. I don't think I cranked it long enough looking back, but I'm not sure that's related. On the second attempt to start, I hear koosh. And um, then I just hear free spinning of the starter motor. So I get out of the plane and look, and this is what I find. So starter completely cracked in half. There was teeth missing off the ring gear. I didn't get a kickback on startup this time. I can't recall if I had one previously that might have broken a tooth and caused the uh, the starter to skip skip a gear, you know, so like skip a tooth and then uh, force the starter in that, that direction and break the casting. There's no inclusions or anything on the casting, um, no beach marks, so it's not an imperfection in that. Yeah, I'm getting down, this is too bumpy. Um, so, I don't really know what the root cause was yet, but I ordered parts and I forgot all of them at home, so I got a new starter, new ring gear, all that. It was not cheap. Um, and today I'm going to start pulling it apart and see what I can find. I've got an AMP that's going to come out here and meet me um, another day to help me make sure I do it all correctly. Uh, but I read through the service mails and everything like that. I'm going to take some parts off of it today and then just reassemble it with him later. So let's get on the ground real quick because I'm not digging this. Yeah. 
can't go anywhere anyway. That was lame. Starter's broken, ring gear's broken. I'm hesitant to change everything, obviously, without knowing exactly what caused it because, um, you know, I could just break the new ring gear and starter, but uh, I, like I said, I didn't feel any kickbacks. I don't think it's a mag issue. I just got it out of annual, just completed the mag drop AD. So I know the mags are working. The plane was running fine, but um, it's not to say they didn't break like right then, but we will find out. Let's get this thing put away and get working on the plane. Guys, we're here at the plane. Let me show you what we're dealing with. But yeah, you can see this here. That is supposed to have a piece on it, and that's the starter. And there are all the gear teeth missing off the ring gear. So you can see it's pretty chewed up. Um, again, don't know root cause, but I looked on the ground where it happened. I didn't see any gear teeth, and I only found one in the cowling. So. I'm thinking that there was a kickback earlier that might have damaged the gear teeth. And then um, you can see there's two or three missing, which would allow the smaller gear to kind of spin and then the two gear teeth to meet in the middle and force the, the you know, torque the casting this way and break it. That's my current theory. Um, if, if I don't find any more gear teeth in here, because I didn't go anywhere, if I don't find any more in here, that's the most plausible root cause, I think. So we're gonna we're gonna take this apart, take the cowlings off. I'm gonna get the starter off. I have a new starter. Literally walked out of the house without it this morning. Uh, but really, I shouldn't be putting stuff back on this airplane without an AMP here. So today, I'm just gonna do some disassembly, take the cowlings off, see what I can get to. Um, if I can get this ring gear, and then um, I'll have an AMP come with me um, in a couple days to come out here and put it all back together. And then hopefully, that's it. So um, that's what we're doing today. <laughs> super clean actually this is your cylinder or whatever they call it basically there's a piston in here that moves forward and backward um it's pumped in by some pump pumps engine oil in here and that's what articulates your prop here but i'll take the prop off it's these uh six or eight bolts whatever it is back here there's safety wire on them they're hard to get to and now i'm seeing i need a crow's foot um attachment when i retorque these anyway which i don't have with me so the prop will not be going back on today um but it's okay. I don't want to do that anyways without an AMP. I'll tell you something else. I'm bummed that this is broken, but there's something about being out at the airport, working on the plane. It's what what day? It's December, and it's like 70 degrees out already in the morning here in South Carolina, and um, it's just so much fun working on this damn plane, being out here at the airport. I love it, and someone's here now watching me film. As I'm saying, I'm all alone, but we'll see what they want. That's pretty crazy. The uh, guy in the pickup truck just came by is my uh, the A and P that I did my annual with over at Somerville. So it's Mike. Pretty crazy. So yeah, he, it's actually good. He showed up. He gave me some tips. So. Awesome. Okay, so safety wires out, but this had me confused. This looks like a little pin that goes through like as if it would go through the the, the bolt. Um, so I just called my mechanic and he told me, no, this does not go through. This is part of the assembly. This whole thing comes out of here, right? So this is not um, like a, a bolt on top of a, or excuse me, this is not a nut on top of a bolt. This whole thing is one piece and it goes into, into here. So um, that's why you have a good mechanic ready to go help you out. But these should just come out. I'm expecting a bunch of oil to spill out. So we got this guy. I uh, forgot the bucket. Uh, here we go. Okay, so loosened it up enough. Now we got the oil. 
well coming out and let that drain for a little while and then we'll get back at it. Well, the wind is picking up a little bit and that made a giant mess. Uh, oil's still dripping out of there, but slowed down a little bit. So once that stops dripping, I'm gonna take the prop off the rest of the way and then I don't know. Uh, nothing special getting off it's just bolts but it is a pain in the ass by yourself outside because you can see you have to loosen each one of these bolts like this much at a time all the way around you got to go all the way around and keep loosening or else it binds up so it's a little bit here a little bit there a little bit here a little bit there a little bit here a little bit there all the way around and you got to keep doing that so it took me like 30 minutes to get the prop off or more um but it's off uh, and it's really simple actually um I was wondering how the seal between the prop hub and the airplane worked, but it's literally just an O-ring. There's an O-ring on here, and the O-ring seals right there. So, super simple system. Um, and obviously, when you when you go to change the pitch of the prop, they, it pumps oil into this hub, which pushes that piston and moves it, and that's how the prop hub works. Simply, I don't understand it any further than that. But uh, that's how it works. We got this off. I'm stoked. That was a major step. So let's keep going. I'm not done yet. All right. That's it. Props off. Um, good time to inspect my belt. And now that I'm looking at it, why would I not replace this right now? So I'm definitely going to um, get one of those on order too. And... Uh, I'm much less chipper than I was earlier. Um, this uh, bottom cowling piece here, the whole bottom is a royal pain in the ass to take off. I mean, everything's mounted to it. You got your oil cooler mounted to it. Cow flaps are mounted to it. Um, what else? The controls for your power booster are mounted to it. Um, landing light, that was easy. Obviously, cow flaps on this side. And then you've got to get in there if you can even see and there's uh six bolts that are holding the um the connection to the power boost and the air filter um basically to your throttle body on there as well you got to get those off and then once you can do all that then you can you can loosen these screws and pop that housing off the cowling off and i'm pretty sure you need to do that because you've got to get in here and pull this out. And I thought maybe you could pull it out this way, but the actual motor itself is gigantic. Definitely can't do that. So <sighs> I'm getting there, but this is a pain in the ass. I'm definitely just going to do the disassembly today. I'm gonna drag the plane into one of these hangers over here to keep it covered. And I'm gonna call it good for the day and um, go eat some barbecue with my friends. <laughs> ass that was whoa this should be loose now uh, it is okay that's nice and loose there's a gasket between it just air so it should be okay rtv all over it from the pre-buy they had to repair that that part is really hard to get so they just repaired it that boot there so all uh, right what is next i don't even know Okay, as far as I can tell, there's nothing else on there except for that cable. So I have to disconnect the connections for it, which is going to be a pain in the ass too. Lovely. All right, guys. Well, I think I have reached a stopping point for today. Um, I didn't get the bottom cowling off, but I am only one bolt away from it. But that bolt is, I'll show you what it is. It's a pain in the ass to get off and I need another wrench to do it. Uh, let me show you what I'm working on. Okay, literally, literally, that bolt right there, the one holding that uh, cable on. Um, number one, it's super hard to get to. You can't, can barely get a wrench on it. You cannot get a socket on it because the socket's too thick, so it will not fit. 
and when you do get a wrench on it, you can only turn it like a 32nd or a 16th of a turn maybe, and then the bolt is spinning. So you have to have, you gotta get another wrench on the back of that, um, and I can't do it. I don't have, I don't have another wrench on me. I don't have two, three eighths wrenches. So that is literally all that's stopping me. Everything else is loose. Um, once I get that, I can take the two screws out of here. This will fall off. And then you've got this thing here, which is held on by a bunch of freaking screws, but not a big deal. I just watch where they go. And this should just drop right off or rather unscrew and probably pull off. Um, now that I'm looking, it looks like there'll be bolts to take off there too. Maybe we could just loosen it. I don't know. Um, but I reached a stopping point today. I'm done. I'm gonna mark everything, uh, cover this plane up, and then tuck it away in one of these hangers. So I'm gonna call that part one of this. If you guys like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram if you want to. All that jazz. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Yeah.